Hello, welcome to my channel. In this one I'm going to show you how to draw a honeybee using charcoal. Let's start. As usual I'm going to start uh, with a graphite pencil to do my sketch and then I, I'll switch to charcoal. The paper is a Fibriano sketching paper about five times eight inches in size and the pencils, the charcoal pencils, I'm going to use are uh, Master's Touch woodless charcoal pencils. So first I'm going to draw the the sketch, the general shape of the bee and as always with insects they can be divided into three segments, the head, the thorax or the midsection and the abdomen now here the head will appear a little bit larger because of the angle of viewing and also some of the hind legs will be hidden. Now while I was doing these wings I realized that some of the details on them are so fine and some of the uh, values are so light that I might as well do them with a graphite pencil. I used a 2B graphite pencil for my sketch and I realized that uh, the wings are so fine and so thin and the lines on them are so thin that it would be better to do uh, to do this with a graphite pencil rather than a charcoal pencil. I can sharpen my charcoal pencil pretty well but it's a little bit too dark and some of these lines are just too fine. So I was planning to do all of this in charcoal but I decided to do just a few details in a graphite pencil. After that I switched to a charcoal pencil and drew some of these thinner lines using a medium charcoal pencil. I normally use two grades of these woodless charcoal pencils, a uh, soft and a medium. The medium one is usually my main drawing tool because it's uh, a bit harder and it can be sharpened to a very fine tip without breaking and it can draw fairly clean lines. It's not as good uh, as graphite or uh, colored pencils in terms of drawing those clean fine lines but it's pretty close when it's sharp. After that I drew the antenna here and I also did a, a little bit of softening a bit of blending using a flat brush and also a bit of cleaning up around the edges of these wings. So once I was happy with that, I decided to continue drawing the rest of the head. I drew the antenna and then the mandible here, or whatever it's called, the jaw area, and then one of the front legs which is behind the head. And one of the biggest challenges here with the head and the, the rest of the body will be drawing these fine hairs because the body of the bee is covered with them. Also I left a circle there on the eye uh, where I will have a nice little highlight and I'm going to work around it because I plan to reserve that white space. I don't want to cover it with any charcoal because I want to create a lot of contrast there so if I used an eraser I'm not sure it would be bright enough so I'm just going to work around it. And for some of the darker details I will use a bit of soft charcoal pencil but for the most part I will work with a medium charcoal pencil. There's not that much difference it's just that the soft one is a little bit um, a little bit darker that's all. For my blending tools I'm using um, I'm using tortillions, a homemade tortillion and some flat brushes I'm also going to use a couple of different erasers, but I'll get to that later. I softened the edge of that highlight just a little bit in some places to make it look a bit more natural. And now I'm drawing a lot of these fine hairs, small hairs, that kind of look like fur on the bee's body. Some of them are going to a bit, uh, appear a bit darker than others, depending on... Um, what's behind them I suppose. Now I'm drawing the hairs on the thorax area and just going back to the head to make them look a bit more dense. 
I'm also varying their length and their direction just a little bit to introduce a bit more randomness. So the biggest challenge will be those hairs because I want to make them look natural and I want to be able to have some of these lighter hairs against the darker body. And we'll see how that's going to go with the erasers. Now my brush here is doing a very good job at fluffing up those hairs and making them appear softer and more dense. And here I'm going to draw one of the front legs. So on those legs you will find some reflective bits. That's why I always leave a little bit of white space and then work around it with a, color, uh, with a charcoal pencil. Now moving on to the rest of the thorax here, there's a little bit of shadow between the head and the, and that midsection area. But the, there are also some lighter hairs around the head. So I need to add a, a sufficient amount of value so that these lighter ha hairs would stand out. I can't really work around each and every one of them, so I'm going to try to leave some uh, lighter value for those lighter hairs and refine them a bit later using erasers. But I can't cover them with charcoal completely because I'm not entirely sure if I just use my charcoal pencil if I would be able to erase marks that would be clean enough. Some parts of these wings here because they're obviously transparent uh, uh, we're gonna have to be able to see a bit of that thorax behind behind the or through the wings rather so here I am again softening these fine hairs with my brush and you can see how much more natural everything is starting to look I also added a little bit of shadow under those uh, front legs and then I moved on to the middle legs here and whenever I need to blend them a little bit I just use my tutillion because uh, it can be these these tutillions can be rolled into a very fine tip so they're almost like a pencil I'm also doing a bit of refining with a kneaded eraser taking a bit of value in some of these uh, hairy bits trying to see if I can make if I can pull some of these lighter marks that look like lighter hairs and it's working to a certain degree I can't get very clean edges but it's probably close enough I'm not too worried about that uh, I can also use a Tombow Mono Zero eraser if I want to pull a cleaner lighter mark here and there so I always like to use a combination of different types of erasers, different, ty different types of blending tools because they all behave differently and have a slightly different effect on the drawing process so why not use their advantages. Here I'm kind of wrapping things up with this uh, middle part of the body drawing a little bit of more shadow there because this part is not really covered with those lighter hairs um, I'm just cleaning up the edge of the reflection in the eye a little bit and then going back to the rest of the body here drawing the hind legs now these are obviously going to be the, the longest and the largest of all now as for these uh, the hind legs on the other side of the body opposite of us we can barely see anything because um, the other leg is obscured by the body for the most part and it also appears shorter because of the foreshortening and because of our angle of viewing so we're not going to see much of it we're just going to see the uh, the hind leg that is closer to us I'm just using my brush to distribute that uh, charcoal dust along the bee's body and this is going to be the abdomen area which also consists of a couple of segments which I'll get to a bit later 
And now I can use that charcoal dust that I picked up by blending. I can use that to draw some lighter shapes like this shadow under the bee, for example. I don't want to do this with a charcoal pencil because that's going to be too dark and it's going to produce too much texture. But now, when I just dab a dirty brush there, a brush that has already picked up a little bit of that charcoal residue, it produces exactly the effect that I want it to produce. So now I'm moving on to the abdomen and I'm going to finish the rest of the bee's body. There's also a little bit of hair here uh, but then um, this part here will be a little bit darker. I also need to um, uh, because like I said I, I think that the abdomen itself is flexible it consists of several segments I'm gonna need to leave a little bit of lighter value between them so that I could uh, suggest to the viewer that there is an edge between those segments I did a bit of cleaning up around the abdomen and now I'm just finishing this shadow just pushing the charcoal uh, around from those darker areas to the lighter areas where I want a little bit of shadow. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish the rest of the hind legs. Again we have some of these highlights, these are reflective areas on them. Uh, and I'm just gonna finish uh, these smaller details on the legs. and the rest of the shadow here <clears throat> uh, this lower part of the ad abdomen facing down needed to be a little bit darker, I just added a little bit more value there although there's always a little bit of reflected light coming from down below and I'm just uh, refining some of the details refining the shape of the shadow and uh, cleaning up some parts of the body. I'm also going to need to add some of these fine uh, hairs on the legs themselves. I'm going to try to do this with a Tombow Mono Zero eraser because I think it will produce some very nice small marks but of course it can't be as clean as in my reference. My reference is going to be included in the description if you want to check it out by the way. But I'm getting pretty clean marks against this uh, darker background so that's sort of what I wanted. It doesn't have to look perfect. Just a few hairs, few lighter hairs will probably do the trick. And I'm also going to add some more on the lower part of the leg as well and on these middle and front legs as well. So I'm just adding some of these lighter hairs here and there and cleaning up the edges where I can with this Tombow Mono Zero Eraser and now I'm going back in and adding some darker details using a soft charcoal pencil or whatever is left of my soft charcoal pencil just to create a bit more depth and a bit more contrast because that range of value helps the uh, the drawing appear more three-dimensional and pop out of the paper a bit more. I haven't done any drawings of insects in a while so I wanted to do this one. And um, if you want to check, uh, check out the other ones uh, I'll put the links in the end screen. If you like my videos you should subscribe and give me a like. And if you want to see full-length videos and more content, then you should check out my Patreon. I'm just doing some refining with a brush, putting down some finishing touches. I need to decide where to sign it. I'm just going to put my signature here on the, on the left side. So there it is. Once again, don't forget to subscribe and give me a like, and also check out my other videos. That's it. Uh, thanks for watching.
I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.